This video is about the first mission for Spatial Endeavor, STS-49, and how it represented a bit of revenge for the shuttle program. What you see launching is not, of course, a space shuttle, but rather a rocket known as Commercial Titan III. The Titan line of rockets was developed in the late 50s and early 60s, with the two solid boosters on the side of the regular Titan liquid core. The launcher's capacity was comparable to the eventual capacity of the space shuttle, so when the shuttle was introduced in 1981, the need for the Titan line was diminished. Payloads will all go on the shuttle. In 1985, there were just two Titan launches in the year and one of them was a failure. And in 1986, there was just one launch and it was a failure too. That failure in April of 1986 was due to a solid booster burn through eerily similar to the Challenger disaster in January of the same year. However, with the Challenger disaster and the grounding of the shuttle for more than two years, the American military needed a way to launch its satellites, and so the Titan rocket got new funding. At the same time, Martin Marietta, the manufacturers of the Titan line, decided to make a play for the commercial launch market, and commercial Titan III was born. It had its first launch on New Year's Day 1990, and that was a success. And what you see here is its second launch, Intelsat 603, on March 14th of the same year. This, however, met with a critical problem. The Perigee kick motor failed to separate from the second stage of the rocket. To save the satellite from a quick re-entry, they separated off the Perigee kick motor and used the satellite's thrusters to keep it in orbit, but it was stranded, unable to get to geosynchronous orbit, which is where it was supposed to go. And so Intelsat decided to commission NASA for a shuttle launch to rescue Intelsat 603 by attaching a new perigee motor, an Orbis 21, and that became the first launch for Endeavour on May 7th, 1992, more than two years after the commercial Titan launch. Endeavour was the replacement for Challenger after the disaster, so that the shuttle fleet could be kept at four shuttles. In the wake of the Challenger disaster, the shuttle had been mostly barred from taking on commercial payloads, a fact that had produced the gap in the market that Martin Marietta had tried to fill with Commercial Titan III. And the fact that Intelsat felt it was worthwhile to book a shuttle mission to save this satellite should give you an idea about the cost of such satellites at the time. The fact that the shuttle couldn't regularly carry these non-governmental payloads anymore was a big blow to the financial viability of the program. On the mission were Commander Daniel Brandenstein, who was on his fourth and last mission, Pilot Kevin Chilton on his first mission, and mission specialists Richard Hebe, Bruce Melnick, Pierre Thote, Catherine Thornton, and Thomas Akers, all on their second space flights. The mission proved more of a challenge than the crew had planned, and required some improvisation. As a result, this became the first shuttle mission with four EVAs, or spacewalks, Unfortunately, my little astronaut facsimiles in the video didn't cooperate as I intended, so I couldn't really demonstrate the ins and outs of the situation. Anyway, the first EVA with Thought and Hebe ended with them unable to place a capture bar on the satellite. They tried again on the second EVA, but were again unable to do it. The problem was the satellite was in free-floating position above the shuttle, and the astronauts could only work from positions either on Canadarm, on or tethered to the side of the bay. They didn't have the MMU, which is sort of a jet pack that they could use to move her about with little nitrogen thrusters. Uh, that was removed from service after Challenger due to safety concerns. So they came up with a new plan that would have three astronauts perform the EVA, Thot, Hebe, and Akers, in a first ever. Never before had three astronauts gone on a spacewalk before. It became one of the longest EVAs ever at 8 hours and 29 minutes, but they finally got the job done. The last EVA was related to demonstrating station assembly capabilities, but also happened to use some equipment used for the satellite capture. And this EVA was performed by Thornton and Akers. This mission concluded with the second longest total EVA time for a shuttle mission. The longest was for STS-61, the first Hubble servicing mission where the shuttle saved the space telescope. Ultimately, Intelsat 603 made its way to geostationary orbit, where it remained in operation until March 2010, after which it was moved to a graveyard orbit. Commercial Titan 3 had two more launches, and both were successes, but it proved too expensive, so it had four launches total, uh, with the one partial failure. Without the shuttle as an option, heavier commercial satellites went on Ariane 4, Proton, and eventually the US would get some of the market back with Delta IV and finally Falcon 9. 
Commercial Titan 3 did have an honorable last launch, taking Mars Observer to orbit, but that probe failed for other reasons. Endeavour landed at Edwards Air Force Base on May 16th and would go on to log 25 missions total. Its first mission, though, was a solid example of the unique capabilities of the shuttle and, in the wake of Challenger, a reminder that it could not so easily be replaced by a dumb lifter. So, with Intelsat 603 in geostationary orbit and the shuttle on its way back, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.